I would like to say this tutorial is brought to you by Byte Buddies. What is Byte Buddies, you might ask? Well, it's a formal, well, not really formal, but it's more of a silly club on Rec Room that promotes and creates high quality experiences. Now, once you're inside of your room's two room, you're going to want to grab out your maker pen and you're going to want to find Pathfinder. On top of this, you're going to want to grab a vector component and a get position chip. So, once you have that, you're going to want your get position chip to get the position of your vector component, and that position of your vector 3 will be the target position. So, it'll tell your Pathfinder that the position that it wants to target to is this vector component. Now, I'm going to detach these objects from my board so they're not flying all over the place. I'm going to set one down here. Ignore the vectors I have everywhere else. This is a work in progress room. I'm just using this room for an example. So, I'm going to grab another vector component. So we've got two vector components here. We're going to want to set up a bit of a system though. So it determines which target it's going to be. So, we're going to get a list, list create, you're going to wire both of your vector components into your list create, you're then going to want to grab a random from list, so essentially you can have a lot more, it's just you would need more vector components. You would also need to configure your list create and then just add more inputs. For now, I'm just going to use these two for example. Now, so we're going to use a vector3 variable. Random from list will be wired into your get position, and then the vector3 on the output of your get position will be wired into your vector3 variable, and your random from list will be wired into your vector3 variable, which we can then change to. Chords. What this is going to do is this will save the X, Y, and Z of the pathing that it wants to do. So if I random from list and it picks this top vector, it'll put its X, Y, and Z from the get position into its chords, and then we can have it run the target position. So now let's say, right, so to get this to work, you'll notice if I go to run it here, it doesn't work. It doesn't move. One thing you have to do is you have to open your watch. You have to go to this room, room details. You're going to have to go to settings, scroll down until you see bake nav mesh, bake your nav mesh, and you'll see on your flooring everything turns purple. So then now if I go and click random from list to have it wired in my cords, it falls to the floor and it just picked the vector over there and now it's going to pathfind all the way to that vector component. So you want to grab a player git volume chip. Now you can obviously set up an entire new system to it, so if you want the local player to be something different, you can. But I'm just keeping it local player. So as you can see, when I'm talking, the louder and louder that I talk, the louder and louder that the current volume gets. So if I do it like this, there. I have an event receiver, 30 hertz, with a greater or equal chip. So instead of having it to where it'll just hear you when talking, you can give the player a bit of a threshold to speak. So if I'm talking, right? This is around my normal talking, is from whatever this number goes to, to 0.15. Say if I talk any louder, I can make it detect when I talk louder and louder to the point where, so B will be your threshold. So I'm just gonna do 0.15. So if I talk loud enough, you'll see that it runs the system and it's picking a random from list, and you'll kind of see it starts freaking out because it's trying to path between the two positions. But instead of that, we're gonna have it to where it gets the position of your 
local player. So, it gets the position of your local player, and then this will be wired into a cloned coordinate value, so if it's true, it'll save my position of that, and then it'll run into that. So, while I'm talking, it should eventually make its way over to me. It will make its way to me instead of to the to pathfinding. Yep, comes straight to me because I'm talking. And if I keep talking, and if I keep talking, it's gonna follow me. But if I stop talking, oh well, I hit the threshold again. Hey, the point. If I stop talking and I walk away from it, it won't hear me. Now, obviously, you'd have to go on and add more to it. Like you'd have to have it kind of wander the map or. Maybe even constantly chase the player. Like if it's inside with a player, it'll constantly chase it. This is just more so how to do a basic little system for it to detect the player talking. Thank you so much for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed. And I'll see you in the next video. Peace.